Hey folks, it's Lucy with Ballyhoo Creations and this is the fifth video in the beginner series for machine embroidery. This video will talk about stabilizers, I'll talk about all the different kinds, when you need to use which ones, and you can decide which ones you need, which ones are really cool and you want, and which ones you probably never need to mess with. If you're still not sure what stabilizer is, go back and watch videos one and two in this series that talks more about why you need stabilizer. This one will go over the different types and when to use each one. Let's start with cutaway. Cutaway stabilizer is just what it sounds like. After you've embroidered a design, this is the front, this is the back, and you have to cut the stabilizer away from the back of your fabric. You can't just tear it like tear away this stuff will pull your stitches out. So you actually have to cut around and you want to cut as close as you can to your design when you're finished stitching. This is actually the mesh. That's why it's so thin. So you can see I've got two different kinds of cutaway here and I've got my grid background so you can see how translucent they are. This is a no-show mesh. It is a type of cutaway and you see that little grid of squares on there. That makes it very strong, but it's also very thin and see-through, so it won't show through on the back of your clothes. Like if you stitch a polo shirt, and you know how sometimes the, the stabilizer shows through, you can see it through the shirt, like it's called ghosting. So the no-show mesh is good for that. It's so thin that it doesn't ghost as much, and you can also buy this in flesh tone colors too. So I've got the, this is a medium weight cutaway here. And you can see, you can barely see through it. And a heavyweight probably wouldn't see through at all. I don't have any of that. And then this is the no-show mesh. Both of them are strong and will stabilize your fabric. Um, if you have a really heavy design, you might want to use something heavier like this. But the no-show mesh is very strong, and I like it a lot, especially when I'm doing uh, dolls in the hoop or something. I typically will use this because it's easy to turn things inside out with this very thin stabilizer, too. So that's a cutaway. And then for tearaway, I've got a couple of different kinds here. And tearaway is, again, exactly what it sounds like. Don't ignore this, it says mesh, but I used a tearaway. And you just tear the stabilizer away from the design and you see how it comes off clean. Now there are little pieces left in there and for some people that will drive them crazy. You can use tweezers or I'm going to use some little hemostats here and you can pull out any bits like that if you need to. But typically you wouldn't need to unless this could be scratchy on the back and I'll show you something later that'll fix that problem. But usually these little bits of tearaway you can leave behind unless it's a project where you absolutely have to remove them like maybe a towel. Tearaway is a very versatile stabilizer because you can pull it off cleanly from the back of your embroidery but it will hold it in place pretty well. Now the exception is if you're doing a really stretchy fabric oftentimes the stitches will actually perforate your tear away and it won't hold it in the hoop anymore so you have to be careful about that but tear away is very useful especially on woven fabrics and I even have one here this is called cotton soft and this is 100% cotton stabilizer. Usually our stabilizers are not cotton. And the reason that I'm pointing this out, so if you're gonna do something that goes in the microwave, like a bowl cozy, uh, they make baked potato wrap heater things, and also um, heat packs, like you put either rice or I like cherry pits in mine, you can embroider those with a rayon thread and a rayon bobbin thread because rayon is microwave safe, so is cotton. And then you can use this cotton soft stabilizer and that way you can put the entire thing in the microwave and it'll be safe. You have to use all, no polyester, no acrylic, nothing like that can go in the microwave. But as long as you stick with cottons and rayons, um, you're safe with that. Natural fibers, okay, not the unnatural. So this cotton soft is used for things like that. Most people don't know about this one, but I have used it. Works good. And with the tearaways and cutaways, they come in different weights. You can usually find them in a, a light, a medium, and a heavy, and that just tells you how thick they are. This one is a light tearaway. This one here, um, still a light to medium, and then you can get them even heavier than this. Okay, let's talk about soluble stabilizers. There's two kinds, water soluble, that melts in water and heat soluble that melts under a hot iron. I'll show you both. Okay, here we've got, actually, these are water soluble and this is a heat soluble over here. I'll talk about that one in a minute, 
but the water soluble it's called water soluble stabilizer people call it WSS for short and it's confusing because there's actually two different major kinds one is a clear film like this and you can see through it and the other looks more like a regular stabilizer but this is water soluble so these are both water soluble and this is very confusing I had a hard time when I was trying to learn people talk about freestanding lace and you use water soluble stabilizer and I hooped this cleared stuff up and made a total mess doesn't work that way um, freestanding lace needs to have this type of stabilizer some people call it violin or some people call it water soluble but um, just looks like a stabilizer this one particular one is aqua mesh by OESD but there's a lot of different all the brands have this kind and then there's the film why would you need one versus the other well I find the film actually tears away better when you do a project like this or a towel or something like that and you want to use a topping you want the stitches to sit on top of your fabric real nicely and this tears away cleanly but see there's little bits that might be left behind and so what we do with those little bits is we just spray them with water or you can wash it and that stabilizer goes away that little bit is completely gone it dissolved in the water and I'll even show you some other we'll, we'll just make a mess here that's what the water soluble does when it gets wet so it just melts into this gummy gluey it, it's it is kind of gross I'm not a fan of it so that's the water soluble and this one does the same thing melts in the water although this one doesn't melt as easily but I can feel how it's getting gummy and it will come off in the laundry it just takes more water for this stuff Ugh. see how it's falling apart and now that I've made a mess I'll put that aside okay so the heat soluble this is also a clear film it's also used as a topper why would you want the heat soluble instead of water soluble well here's why when you're doing towels you put this on top of the terry cloth and you embroider over it and the water soluble will melt away in the laundry so eventually the loops of your terry cloth or fur or whatever it is will eventually start showing through the stitches this heat soluble stuff doesn't go away in the laundry the dryer's not hot enough so it stays under your stitches a lot longer and you'll have a much longer lasting embroidery that way and this stuff melts under the heat of an iron I'll show you okay I've just got a little tiny piece of this hopefully you can kind of see that it's there I'll get the light glaring off of it this stuff I'm a scientist and I still don't understand how this stuff works but when you put your iron on it it just disappears I mean it's gone it's not even on my iron my iron's very dirty but it just it's it's gone it's so cool the way that it just melts away and disappears and so same with the water soluble you would just iron it away instead of wash it away especially if you have something where you can't launder it you want to embroider it you're given a gift you can't wash it the iron away is good for that too so I've just I just recently got some of this tried it out I love it I will be using this anytime I do a towel or something I will now use this iron away stuff instead of the this water soluble by the way your water soluble stabilizers need to be stored in plastic away from the humidity of your house so they usually come in plastic like this one has a plastic bag this one has a plastic container you want them as plastic airtight as possible you don't want to just store them out on the open see I just left the puddle of water and it got on my stabilizer and now that's ruined so that was really smart let's talk about sticky stabilizers the sticky stuff okay there's a couple of different kinds of sticky stabilizer this one here is paper backed and I'm gonna try to peel the edge away and show you it's like a sticker it can be hard to, to get started but you see how there's stabilizer this is the paper backing wax paper backing and there's stabilizer here and it is pretty sticky and there's a couple of different ways that people use this one way is you can go ahead and hoop that stabilizer like you would any other stabilizer 
And then what you do is you take a pen and you score like a cross and then you peel all of the paper backing away so it's sticky in the hoop and then you float your fabric by laying it on top of the sticky. Okay, another way that you can use sticky stabilizer is that you go ahead and peel the paper off and then you go ahead and you stick your hoop onto it all together and then you would go ahead and place your fabric on that so that the sticky is actually stuck to the back of your hoop. And Fast Frames uses this method a lot. Easy Frames, Fast Frames, people who use those with multi-needles can do it with this sticky stabilizer. So you've got your paperback sticky that I showed you, and then there's also this water-activated sticky. And this one looks like a regular stabilizer on one side, but it has a water-activated glue on the other side. So that when you spray it, you, you go ahead and hoop this like you would any stabilizer. And then when you spray it with some water, it gets really gummy and tacky. And then you come along and you put your fabric on there and it'll stick. See that? It's picking it up. So it's pretty sticky and then it'll dry. Um, I like to let mine dry a little bit before I machine embroider. But even if I don't, I don't have a lot of problems. So the advantage of the water activated sticky over the paper backed is the water activated doesn't tend to gum up your needle. Some brands of the paper backed will make your needle sticky and have problems with embroidery the water activated doesn't seem to have that problem so I'm switching over to this also you don't have to mess with peeling away the paper backing which is a real pain if you've ever done it it can be a hassle so the water activated I just hoop this up get my squirt bottle spray it down with some water and then go ahead and stick my fabric and it works great I really love this stuff the other kind of sticky technically it's not sticky until you use an iron it's fusible so with this stuff let me get my little piece of scrap fabric here and you can see with the fusible there's a shiny side hopefully maybe that'll pick up one side is shiny and one side is not shiny so the shiny side is the sticky side and you just iron it on just like any other fusible product a little bit of heat and now it's stuck to my fabric this one's not super strong, but this one is now stuck to my fabric. And this particular one is actually a wash away fusible. So we'll talk about combinations in a little bit. But then you would go ahead and put that on the back of your fabric and then hoop it like you normally would and then stitch on it. And it'll give you a nice stable surface. So far I've talked about cutaway and tearaway and soluble and sticky stabilizers. And that's usually where people stop. And I still have a few more to show you. Technically, this one is not a stabilizer, but I consider it a stabilizer because we use it to stabilize our fabric when we're doing applique embroidery. The heat and bond light is what we should use. Let's not use the heat and bond ultra hold. Don't ever use the red stuff if you're stitching through it. Embroidery machine, sewing machine, we hate this stuff. Get rid of it. Don't want it. The purple stuff, heat and bond light, is sewable. You can sew through it without gumming up your needle. And we like it for applique. You attach this to your applique pieces and then after you've tacked it down, the applique piece tacked down on your main fabric, then you can go ahead and press it with an iron and it'll stick. Even if you don't stick it down, this does stabilize that applique piece enough so that it's much easier to cut and it won't fray. Um, it's just, it stitches better. So this is a really great thing for applique. If you want perfect applique, you got to use the heat and bond light pretty much. Or a substitute. Okay, you probably didn't expect to see this one. This is fleece for quilting. This one is a specialty called Wrap and Zap, and it's microwave safe. And the reason that I'm talking about fleece as a stabilizer is because sometimes you can use fleece to stabilize your fabric and give it a little bit of a puff effect when you're embroidering. Depends on the design. You don't want to use it on just anything. But I was just earlier doing a piece. This is a, an applique piece. And I messed up on several places because I was trying some new things, but it's just got this batting on the back. Now it is stretchy, so it's not going to stabilize for a heavy design. You wouldn't want to use it for that. You'd want a different stabilizer for that. But if you're doing something more open and you're looking for something that can go in the microwave, you need cotton fabric, you need uh, cotton or rayon thread in your top and bobbin, and then you can use this uh, microwavable fleece and you can microwave the entire thing with embroidery on it. I don't want to get too much into how to microwave your embroidery but it is possible and again fleece can work as a stabilizer for some designs 
new favorite here. This is Terio Magic. It is a liquid spray stabilizer and I just got it and started using it and I have to say I love it. It makes your fabric stiff so this fabric has been treated and this is the same fabric untreated and you can see how floppy it is. It's just very lightweight um, cotton but with the stabilizer so you spray it, get it wet, just barely damp, and then let it dry out a little bit and iron it, and it gets stiff like this. And then when you run it through the washing machine, it washes out and it goes back to this. So it's really an amazing thing. When you treat your fabric with this, it eliminates most of the puckering. It's really because it's so stiff. So I love this stuff as a stabilizer. They even say, this company says you can um, embroider without stabilizer. I have not tried that. I don't think that I would want to, but this stuff as a liquid stabilizer, it's not a starch. It is a polymer. I actually think I know what it is and I'm going to experiment with it, but Terriel Magic, I really love it. Consider this as a stabilizer. Um, it goes a long way. I've used this to stiffen a t-shirt and then used tearaway um, stabilizer on the back as well. It turned out fine and nothing on the back when I was done. It was a wonderful thing. Okay, this next one is not a stabilizer that stabilizes your fabric for stitching. It's actually a backing that we use on our project after it's been stitched. This is called uh, a backing. You'll find brands called like Cloud Cover, Tender Touch, Gentle Touch, things like that. And what this is is just a nylon fabric. Got a little piece of it I cut here. It's fusible on one side and then it's pretty soft on the back on the other side. And so after you've embroidered, here's the front of my design and here's the back. And I'm just going to place it fusible side down over the back and then you iron it all on there. And it'll take a while to get it on. And what I like to do with this stuff is make sure that the corners are rounded. It's much less likely to come off that way because if you have these nice sharp corners, it's easy for them to come off. But when you have a more rounded corner, it, it sticks on better. And this stuff is wonderful for things that you're going to wear, especially if a child is gonna wear it because it covers up all of the scratchy and the thread tails and everything. And now it's nice and soft. There's no scratchy left. Okay, so those are the different stabilizers that I have here in my studio. I have quite a few, but there's some that I'm missing. So there's a puff foam that you can use as a stabilizer and you need special designs for that really, but it leaves a real 3D effect all on your stitches. So that's a puff foam stabilizer. There's also colored stabilizers. Um, I think Floriani makes these. I'm not sure what other brands carry them. So you know how sometimes you have fill stitches and you can see the fabric underneath it? So you can put a colored topper, basically a tearaway topper, and it'll be black or red or whatever. And so that colored stabilizer will show instead of your backing fabric. So that's an option too. There's even a stabilizer that shrinks, so you do special stitch effects on it, and then you heat it and it shrinks up and it wrinkles the fabric in a cool way. So there's stabilizers for everything out there. And then of course, there are combinations of all the stabilizers that I've talked about. For example, this one is a Floriani, it's called Stitch and Wash Tearaway, and it's fusible it is a wash away. It's actually a combination of a wash away and a tear away. So you tear it away and then whatever's left washes away. So it's a tear away, wash away, fusible. Three different stabilizers in one. It's really good for very lightweight, thin fabrics, like if you're doing a silk or something. Okay, so that's a whole bunch of different stabilizers that we talked about. Just to recap, a stabilizer is what goes in your hoop. You hoop the stabilizer and then you can either hoop the fabric with it or put the fabric floating on top. A topper is something that goes on top of that fabric to keep the stitches from sinking in. And then the other kind of stabilizer we talked about is a backing that you fuse onto the back to hide your stitches after you're done and it won't scratch you. So let's talk about buying stabilizer. You can buy it in sheets, pre-cut sheets like this, or you can buy it on rolls. And you just roll off what you need and cut it off. Rolls are good for economy, um, especially the more you buy, the cheaper it gets. So you can buy big rolls. Also, you wanna consider the width of the roll. They come in anywhere from eight to and up, maybe 12 inches. Sometimes you can get wider rolls. 
but since the bigger hoops, especially for home embroidery, are up to 12 to 14 inches is the longest length. So even if you had a 14 inch wide roll, you would still be able to cover that hoop easily. Consider the size of your hoop when you're buying your rolls of stabilizer. If you have a small 4x4 hoop, then you don't need something 12 inches wide unless you want to use, you know, several, cut it up into several segments. Oh. These sheets here, these pre-cut sheets that I have are a 10 by 12, so they will fit nicely in a 4x4 hoop or a 5x7, but they won't fit a 6x10 because they're not big enough. So I either have to layer them one over the other and hope that my needle doesn't get caught where they overlap, or I just use rolls for that. So consider the size of your hoop when you're buying the sheets and make sure that the sheet is actually at least an inch bigger than your hoop on each side. And if your hoop is four by four, then you know that hoop is actually bigger than four by four. This is more like, I just measured it. It's six by seven inches. So I would need a stabilizer that's at least seven by eight inches just for a four by four hoop. So this works out well. And sometimes you can even get two hoopings there's one, you go ahead and stitch, cut it close to your design there, and then you can go ahead and use the second piece. As far as which brands, this is a place where you might be able to cut corners because I have noticed that paying more for stabilizer doesn't really get you a better stabilizer. And I heard John Deere say on one of his videos about stabilizer that there's only a few companies or factories that make embroidery stabilizer and all the different brands buy from those same companies. So it's pretty much the same stuff just with a different name put on it. That may be true, I don't know. I haven't researched that to see how true that is, but based on my buying experience, I think it is true. So. Um, I do buy the cheaper stuff off of Amazon sometimes and I've gotten some good like the no-show mesh on Amazon is great the um, this is these cutaway sheets I think I bought these cheaply on Amazon too and they work great but sometimes you'll find some of the stuff that's cheaper is too cheap like I've had a tear away that didn't tear away cleanly so you just have to experiment um, I do love to get my stabilizer from World Widener which has all the different ones and they have really good prices on it so check out World Widener for your stabilizer I'm happy with that one. Um, there are some other brands that I think are overpriced, and those are typically the ones that you find in the stores. Uh, that's where I would save my money and not buy the expensive brands in the stores and buy stabilizer that's a little bit cheaper, unless you need it now. Also, um, it's more economical when you buy the larger rolls. And the stores don't tend to have the larger quantities like that. They may have a little package with like a yard of stabilizer and I want 10 yards at a time. Okay, here's a tip that's worth watching this entire video if you got this far. If you are a treasure hunter at thrift stores, garage sales, estate sales, you can find stabilizer there. I got this OESD um, Aquamesh wash away. This is a $20 stabilizer and I paid 99 cents. No kidding, I find stabilizer at thrift stores all the time when I used to go to thrift stores. So always keep your eye out, go check the craft section. You can usually find stabilizers there for pennies on the dollar. And that's really the reason why I've tried so many different stabilizers is because I keep buying new ones that I would find used. What about DIY stabilizers? You may have seen on YouTube people use paper, tissue paper, saran wrap, cling film, things like that. I'm not a fan of those just because stabilizer is not that expensive, so I'd rather use a product that is meant to be used. I worry about cling wrap can definitely get wrapped around your needle bar or down in your bobbin case and cause problems. Wax paper little bits could get pushed in there, so I, I stay away from that myself. I don't judge anybody who is using those methods and says it works, but if you're a new person and you're trying to figure out what works and doesn't work, I would start with a real stabilizer that you bought and paid for and not try to use wax paper paper or cling wrap um, because if it is causing problems you won't know because you're new and you're still trying to work through all of the other problems that can be happening with hooping and threading and all those things so I would stick with real stabilizers that's what I do I've hit all the high points on the stabilizers and I think I hit a whole bunch of the low points too. So which ones do you want to try? Which stabilizers do you love? Are there any particular stabilizers that work really well for you for certain projects, especially difficult ones? T-shirts are difficult, obviously towels, we got to have those toppers, right? If you have any comments to share, please leave a comment down below and tell everybody what you know about stabilizer. I'm curious, are there any ones that you heard about today that you had not heard about and you're really excited to try? 
let me know. I've got two more videos in this beginner series. I'm going to talk about designs, where they come from, uh, what's a good design, what's a bad design, how to judge a design for a particular fabric, uh, how to get a design onto your machine. I'm going to talk about all about designs. And then the last one we're going to talk about some troubleshooting like with puckering and bird nesting and things like that. So that's the last two videos. It's number five. Got six and seven still coming. That's all I got for today. There's two different kinds. Water soluble and heat solvable. Solvable? Two kinds. Water soluble and heat solvable. Sol soluble. <laughs> Let's get fancy here. Woo! Oops. <laughs>